Welcome to Cool Explorations. In Canada, we used to have a great relationship and reputation among all the countries of the world. We were respected and treated well wherever we went. People saw our military and thought of peace. Now our military has become the laughing stock of the world, not because of anything our brave soldiers have done, but because of our government, and they will not supply them with proper equipment, sending money overseas instead. As for our Prime Minister, well, he is the main reason why our country is no longer respected around the world. We are seen as weak fools, people to be scorned and laughed at, not ideal trade partners, and a country that is so destroyed economically that our oil has gone from a major export to being sold off at rock bottom prices, simply because of incompetent mismanagement by our federal government, a country where big businesses are advised against setting up in. How did we come to this? Let us start with this week's Buckingham Palace incident, where Trudeau spoke candidly about the U.S. President Donald Trump. He was speaking with British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and French President Emmanuel Macron at the NATO summit, not realizing that someone was video recording the conversation when he stuck his foot all the way down his throat. Always assume you are on camera when you are at events like that, especially when you are a public figure. Letting your guard down, as Trudeau does far too often, is foolish, like asking for someone to make you look like an idiot. Trudeau does not need any further help on this matter. He does it well enough on his own, and it reflects poorly upon Canada as a whole. Trudeau was caught complaining about Trump in his last-minute press conference. His tone was quite annoyed. When this reached President Trump, who is not one to shy away from candid statements, he called Trudeau two-faced. I have seen some joking, though, that he is three-faced. He is white, brown, and black-faced. Brown, of course, in reference to his being full of crap, or in other cases, I've seen him being shit-faced or drunk. The black-faced reference we will look at next. Short-term, this has become quite the scandal. Um, it was ranked 7 on the scale of 10 with one of the other analysts. Um, but long-term, it may not really play a huge role. Making these kind of statements about allies is not the way to maintain allies when he's already chased Israel away. Trudeau did try to dumb down the event, um, but didn't really make any attempt to apologize. He just brushed it off. He claims that we have a strong relationship with the U.S. And yes, we do have a strong giving relationship with the U.S. Trudeau is such a pushover that Trump's strong personality brings Trudeau and Canada to its knees in negotiations. Now for the black face incident, Trudeau over the years has shown that he has little class or tact when it comes to choosing appropriate costumes for Halloween. He has painted his face black on several occasions, more than he himself admittedly knows. In and of itself, I would actually um, not see this as a big deal if someone of my social class um, and social standing did this. Uh, it really isn't a racial act um, in and of itself, but one would need to be cautious of the crowd that you're in as some may take offense and our world does take offense far too easily. Coming from someone who could expect to always be a public figure, even growing up, which he never really did, he should have refrained from dressing up like this, especially since he did it on numerous occasions. One would think that one of his rich friends would have said something about it, but if they had, would he have listened? The incident has further ruined his reputation, if that is possible, and it has also reflected poorly on Canadians. Of course, the media blows this out of proportion, and then the activists jump all over it, as they always do. If the media could focus on real news, we would all benefit greatly. One of the biggest international screw-ups that Trudeau has made in his, in his uh, terms is the 2018 India trip, a trip that brings out groans whenever it is mentioned. On this trip, Trudeau made a fool of Canadians once again. He turned it into more of a costume dance party suited more for his drama teacher days. He wore their traditional garb, but he was not even dressed in the correct clothing for the event he was attending. The smarter move would have been to dress like a Westerner, as this is what they would have anticipated and respected. Many of the Indian leaders he met with were in suits already. Then the dance he performed was embarrassing and improper as well, but I won't go too far into that. Bad press 
was a gain to be had when he was apparently snubbed by the Indian Prime Minister uh, Narada Modi, who did not meet with him. How many Prime Ministers have a fellow Prime Minister come to their country and then refuse to meet with them? It says a lot about what they think about Trudeau and Canada. The biggest scandal of this trip, however, was the invitation of Jaspal Atwal to Trudeau's party. Atwal is a convicted Sikh extremist who attempted to kill an Indian state minister who was visiting Canada in 1987. He was sentenced to 20 years in the court of Canada. Trudeau claims that this invitation was rescinded when he realized the oversight. This may not be the case, however, as Atwal was seen in pictures with Trudeau's wife, Sophie. This whole incident brought anger from the Indian people, and rightfully so. The question that I would put forth is this. What is Trudeau even doing in the same circle as a convicted Sikh extremist? This may provide some insight into his accepting so much immigration from the terrorist countries and even more insight into his slack security measures for screening these potential immigrants. Trudeau has a tendency to break ethics laws. He did this again in an international incident with the Chinese this time around. In 2016, Trudeau held a fundraiser for the Liberal Party, he invited his uh, people to the event, um, and these people only got invited after donating hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, to his father's Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. This foundation was held at the home of, the, of Benson Wong, who happens to be um, the chair of the Chinese Business Chamber of Commerce. The ethics law in question is the ban on cash for access, which is exactly what happened here. Trudeau then had the nerve to defend his violation of allowing these people to come only because they paid for access. Um, and he, he stated that it will bring in middle-class jobs, which of course never happened. I could go on listing ways that Canada has been embarrassed by Trudeau on an international scale. There's so many of them. But I will just touch on one more final point. Um, Fidel Castro, the Cuban dictator, was a longtime family friend of the Trudeau family back in the days of Pierre. Pierre and Fidel were so close that rumors flew around the similarities in appearance of Justin and Fidel. Theories arose around Justin being Fidel's son. Justin even has was a pallbearer for Castro's funeral. Justin Trudeau then makes Castro out to be a great leader and a role model. He claims that Castro did great things for his people and that he cared for them. The truth is that Castro was a terrible communist dictator who murdered thousands of people. He refused medical attention for anyone who was not communist and he tortured and raped anyone who opposed him. And then he set up slave labor camps. This doesn't sound like a person who loved his people dearly, does it? In fact, it sounds more like a tyrant and a narcissist. But then again, Trudeau obviously sees him as a role model. This is exactly what we want from our country, right? No. Is this what we want to, um, Trudeau to implement? No. Is this what I think Trudeau has planned? Yes. We have people in the West and we need to stand up for ourselves. We the people of the West need to act and we need to gain independence before we see more of this happening in Canada before it is too late. Remember to like and subscribe.